So we all know lightning, undeniably really fucking cool. It's dangerous, it's mysterious, it's powerful. There's such a thrill in a thunderstorm when that lightning hits. So what if you could control lightning, like Thor? That's what we're gonna try and do. I wanna make Thor's hammer that actually shoots lightning bolts. This is one of the hardest projects we've ever attempted, so sorry for the lack of videos recently. Also, we've been working on our new world's first bouncing frisbee product called the Spring Ring coming soon. But if you do end up liking this, drop a like, subscribe, and definitely comment what I should make next. That way I know exactly what you want to see. So, how are we going to do this? Well, I actually asked you guys that on Instagram. Not because I need ideas, all right? Like, I already have a super good plan and stuff. Yeah, I know, dude, they have no idea. He's definitely using us for ideas. Shit. Mostly y'all said plasma, electricity, drones. Needless to say, this is gonna be tough. I'm not a lightning expert or electrical engineer of any kind, so to even have a shot at getting this to work and keep everything safe, I'm gonna have to learn a lot and get help from the right people. Which reminds me, just please don't try this, like at all. Now my background is physics, so let's break this down and figure out what we're up against. So the hammer can act as a lightning rod, but also blast lightning on its own. So I guess it would help to know what lightning actually is. And the best way I've found to answer that, and really everything else about this project, is with water. So you can think of clouds kind of like this balloon filling up, where the water pressure is the voltage. Electrons slowly float into the cloud, filling it up until the pressure becomes too large, and boom, it pops, splashing down just like lightning. So the balloon breaks because the pressure is too much for the balloon to hold, just as air breaks when the voltage is too much for the air to insulate and it jumps to the ground, lightning. So maybe we can use something like this Van de Graaff generator. It's basically a mini lightning machine that collects electrons down here, stores them up in this ball via this belt, just like water filling up a tank, until the voltage gets too high for the surrounding air to contain, then the sparks will jump to the nearest ground source to bring everything back to equal. Now you might be wondering, is this dangerous? Especially if we're gonna make really big lightning arcs. Well, yes and no. There are two things to consider when dealing with electricity, and that's voltage and current. As we said, if voltage is like the water pressure, then current is the amount of water flowing. So if you take a garden hose and put your thumb over the end, you increase the pressure or voltage, but the total flow of water or current decreases. The water goes much further, but there's a lot less of it, just like electricity. And if you turn up the nozzle, the amount of current flowing increases, but the voltage or pressure stays the same. And the water doesn't travel as far, but now there's more of it. So the danger comes from the current or amount of electricity. So this generator and lightning are like pressure washer. Very high pressure or voltage, but not a lot of actual current flowing. So as long as we stay away from the dangerous high current, the arcs themselves aren't actually that dangerous. But to make really big sparks, we need a massive generator, which won't fit in the Thor hammer. But they do make smaller gadgets, like this mini static generator, which have a better spark to size ratio. If we hook up a battery and some electrodes, we can actually statically charge our body. I just put the positive electrode on my leg and the ground electrode on the bottom of my shoe. So it makes contact with the ground and then the rubber shoe soles keep me insulated from the ground, so I become electrically charged. Basically, I'm now the generator and can shock whatever I touch. It's kind of like an extreme version of rubbing your feet on a carpet and shocking someone. If I touch LEDs, they turn on, I can shoot sparks from my fingertips, and if I get anywhere near sand, which I borrowed from an anthill outside, is that weird? It goes crazy. It jumps to my hand, then falls down again, creating like a sandstorm, <laughs> like some sort of superhero. Not too many practical uses though. Like the best I thought of was putting salt on a steak or something. Anyways, we've made it smaller, but the sparks are still nowhere near as big. We need something that makes the biggest sparks possible while still fitting into a Thor hammer. That leaves us with a Tesla coil. It's probably the best way to generate the biggest continuous sparks, and it's just a staple of mad science. So as it turns out, there's a lot of different kinds of Tesla coils, but they all have these four parts. The driver board, the primary coil, the secondary coil, and the top load. So the driver sends little pulses of power into the primary coil. Think of waves of water being pushed into the coil, which is just a few turns of wire. Then these power waves are transferred to the secondary coil through a magnetic force. So when this wireless energy transfer happens, it increases the voltage, creating that same pressure washer effect we talked about earlier. This is what makes the sparks shoot from the top. Then that metal ball helps to disperse the electricity evenly and leads to bigger sparks. So all you need to make one is some thin copper wire wrapped around a tube, two pieces of wire with a space between to act as a spark gap, a capacitor to build up enough charge, this is what generates the electric waves, a top load for those bigger sparks, and then a power source. We can even stick it inside a Thor hammer and it can wirelessly light up lights. And honestly, it's pretty cool, but I know you're not impressed by this. You want more. YouTube men make big lightning. So what we really need is a small Tesla coil that makes giant sparks. 
And for that, unfortunately, things get complicated. So the next step up after the basic Tesla coil we made are called solid state Tesla coils. They use a different fancy type of driver with electric switches to better control the waves of electricity entering the coil. And that's the secret behind this entire project. The better you can control these waves of electricity, the bigger the sparks you can make. Ooh, gotta love the lab coat. So imagine this tank is the Tesla coil and these waves are the electrical pulses we're putting in it. The more in tune we can make these waves, the bigger they can get with minimal work. This rate that makes the water move the most is called the resonance frequency. You actually experience the same thing when pumping on a swing or jumping on a trampoline. If you time it just right, your movements compound and you go extra high. Same thing with the Tesla coil. If we time these electric wave pulses just right, we can make much bigger sparks with minimal energy. This is what that fancy driver does in solid state Tesla coils. Then we could take it one step further and add another layer of this resonance to make a double resonance solid state Tesla coil. This not only matches the resonance of that tall secondary coil like before, but now we also match the other primary coil's resonance. Now both coils have the same resonance, causing two layers of resonance all building on each other to make the biggest spark possible with the least amount of energy. And then finally, we can even take it one step further by changing the way we make the waves. Instead of just quickly jerking our hand back and forth like this, we can slowly accelerate throughout the push. By slowly ramping up the voltage like this, instead of just pulsing it like we were doing before, something really cool happens. As the spark breaks out, the voltage starts to increase. This turbo boosts the spark, allowing it to grow much larger and straighter than any other coil. And that's the secret behind these massive sparks. It's called a quasi-continuous wave double resonance solid state Tesla coil. Holy shit, that's a mouthful. Honestly, the name perfectly describes just how complicated this thing is to make. The Tesla coil we made earlier was a model rocket. This is like going to space. And this is where the magnitude of this project really hit me. I was way outside my comfort zone here. So I made some calls to some Tesla coil experts, hoping to get some help on how to make this. So one of the people I talked to was Jay, and he runs the Plasma channel on YouTube. Does a ton of cool electricity related projects, makes some very cool videos, definitely check them out. So he introduced me to Joe. Now Joe is a member of Architac, a group of leading experts in modern Tesla coil performance and art installation. Just look at some of the cool stuff they do. And they're actually the ones who invented this solid state Tesla coil we're trying to make. So if anyone can help me out, it's these guys. So I said I was looking to create a portable QCW coil, like the one his friend Steve invented, who's also a part of Architac. And he confirmed my suspicion that this was definitely going to be very hard. Now he and Steve were actually up for helping me out with this, but unfortunately due to scheduling, they weren't gonna be free for a while. But we're not giving up yet. I did a bit more research and found a website with plans to make one of these QCW coils. And it takes you through step by step how to actually make one. Yes! Making progress. I will say though, this is not light reading. I'll spare you the details, but just look at this sentence. The bridge will continue to be the same bridge made of the fantastic warp to my GPTs. But this time I thought I'd rewind the GPT board. Will it also remind us 24 years? Yeah, do you know what any of that means? I, I don't. And that's pretty much how I went through this paper. It would say something, I wouldn't know what it meant. I'd go look it up and come back. Anything I didn't understand, I would research. I went down some crazy rabbit holes, but it is super important that I understand what's happening if I'm gonna have any shot at getting this to work. Also because of how dangerous this can be. So after days of reading, it was finally starting to make sense. So I decided to start with a simpler double resonance coil and go from there. So I ordered the parts, the coils, the top load, the driver. And again, I'm not an electrical engineer, but I got as much of it as I could professionally designed. Altium, one of our sponsors, is a great tool for this. It's an amazing PCB design software that's super intuitive. It automatically checks your work to make sure you don't make any mistakes and you can collaborate with ease. So if you ever need professionally designed printed circuit boards, definitely check them out. So I put everything together and this thing's already super cool. We've definitely got some longer sparks and it can wirelessly transfer power from further away. But to make the sparks really long, still need that QCW cherry on top that ramps the waves. And this is where I ran into trouble. Well, one of the many times I ran into trouble. I won't go into too much technical detail, we just don't have time, but there's hundreds of components that all need to be in the right configuration for this to work. I actually did get in contact with the guy who made the website that I was referencing, and he actually said he'd be down to help. But unfortunately, he was traveling and uh, I never heard back. Ah, so close. So, a bit more digging, a few more calls, and I found a guy named Daniel who's actually made one of these QCW coils, and he said he could actually help. Finally, a huge round of applause for Daniel, the real MVP with this project. We beefed up all of the components. Old capacitor, new capacitor. Old LC filter, new LC filter. Now I know size isn't everything, but for massive lightning Thor hammer Tesla coils, it kind of is. Just look at the complexity of this driver circuit though. Like, holy shit, this is insane. Now you see why not too many of these exist. We housed everything in an air-cooled carbon fiber box powered by two 6S LiPo batteries. You could wear it all on your back. 
and then this plugs into the coil, which makes a lightning. Then the coil is pretty much the same as before, but now it's finely tuned to be in perfect resonance with the driver circuits to make those massive lightning bolts. So after months of researching, building, phone calls, thousands of dollars spent, finally have a working QCW DRSSTC, AKA the lightning bolt maker. What the fuck? <laughs> That's crazy. Clearly we're dealing with some pretty high tech electronics. So I thought, why not give away some electronics? Like this brand new iPad. Cause without y'all watching these videos, like I wouldn't be able to do any of this. If you do want to win, just drop a like and subscribe. Then follow me on my Instagram and like my Thor picture. Uh, in the next video, I'll announce the winner. Speaking of that, congratulations to the winner of my bouncing Captain America shield from the last video. We'll be sending it soon. Also, holy shit, thank you so much for all of the crazy support on that video. Also, y'all been sending me a lot of like Captain America shield builds and other gadgets that you've made. So check them out. First, we got Jesse getting creative with the cardboard, then Ryan with his folding shield, and also Ian with this sweet jet bike. So if you've made anything cool, definitely send it my way at Jay Laser Video, and we'll put it in video. All right, the last thing we need to do fit this in a hammer. And while the Tesla coil is small in comparison relative to the sparks it makes, it would still take a giant hammer to fit around it. Like maybe we could have like the coil run into the handle, like that might work, uh, but it'll still look kind of goofy. Like some of it might be sticking out. So I thought maybe we could use Thor's bigger hammer, Stormbreaker. So I 3D modeled the hammer to fit around the coil. Then I made a cardboard cutout version to check the scale. And yeah, as hard as I try, I'm just not as big as Chris Hemsworth. So this made me look tiny. Then I got the idea to rotate the coil sideways and we could move the breakout point so it would still shoot out the top. Then it might just fit in a regular Thor hammer. It'll still be giant, but this first hammer is just so much more iconic. I think I'd rather make that. So again, I 3D modeled the entire hammer so it would fit around the coil, but we can't make this out of just any material. Can't be conductive, like at all, cause you know, like I could 3D print everything, but I want it to be stronger than that. So I got some super high strength polycarbonate sheets and milled them down to make all the parts for the hammer. Oh yeah, did I mention we now have this super awesome Tormox 770 CNC milling machine? This thing is gonna take our projects even higher, all right? Now we can actually make super complex professional metal parts in-house. This project was actually a great learning experience for me. You know, we were using plastic, so it wasn't too high stakes, but definitely get ready for some amazing stuff with this. So big shout out to Tormox for hooking us up with this Thing, definitely check them out if you're interested. So after a bit of trial and error, I got all the pieces cut out and screwed them together. And the plan is to have the wires coming out the handle and connect to the driver on my back. But because we turn the coil sideways now, all of the wires have to run down past the coil itself and out through the handle. Turns out this is bad because when I turn the handle on, the electricity arc to the wires, not supposed to do that, and it broke. I wanted to cry. There's always these moments in these projects when you just feel like so defeated. Like we're so close. It doesn't work. It keeps arcing to itself. We're reaching that point in the video where I really just want to give up. It's been about like two months since my last video. Been a lot riding on this. Straight feels like a movie, you know, like a climax is almost, but then it'll work out, right? Well, this isn't a movie. There's no reason this has to work out. There's no guaranteed happy ending. That's how I felt. Uh, for you guys though, well, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't post it if I didn't get it to work. So yeah, your boy figured it out. This tiny little piece. Can hardly else... focus on the damn thing. <laughs> I know. Goes in this <laughs> massive Or else the whole thing won't work. Wish me luck. We got it working, threw some really cool paint on it, and we're finally done. So here it is. First put on the backpack, which could be covered by a cape if you want like the full Thor effect. But honestly, I'm proud of this circuit and its complexity, so I'm gonna keep it showing. Next, we need to ground the circuit. And this is very important or else, you know, again, that's what these metal feet plates are for. Or we can even connect it directly to like house ground, but it is still completely mobile though. Next, we plug in the hammer. I wrapped the wires in leather, so it kind of looks like that arm loop at the end of Thor's actual hammer. Yeah, it's definitely a chunky boy, but I just think the size adds to the intensity. Lastly, the trigger. Just flip it on, click the button, and you have lightning. We can actually tune the spark's power and duration so we can like perfectly dial in the type of lightning we want. Whatever size out to, I think honestly like 10 feet. Now we just need a target. Luckily our sponsors, Displate, hooked us up with these amazing full metal MCU character posters. They also got a bunch of other pop culture stuff too, and they should make for amazing targets. They actually have over 1.4 million different designs you can choose from, so you're sure to find something you'll like. And because they're high quality prints on metal, they should act as perfect lightning rods. 
and mounting them is very easy too because it's all done with magnets. Like, check this out. I've actually chosen a few of my favorite dish plates for you guys. You can check out with the link below. If you use my link, you'll get 26% off uh, one to two dish plates, and then if you get three or more, you get 36% off. This really does help support me. It also helps trees too, because for every one dish plate sold, a tree is planted. So check out dish plate, link down below. All right, let's have some fun. Guys, this thing is insane. Just look at the lightning bolts coming out of this. It looks just like the fucking movie, but it's in real life. And the best thing is it's completely portable. Other stuff like this, you need massive Tesla coils to make sparks this size. But this is fully self-contained. You can take it anywhere and have Thor's powers wherever you go. Yeah, I haven't seen any other Thor hammer do anything like this. Actually, I wonder what other Thor videos there are out there. Maybe we meet up or something. Hey, I'm Alan Pad. <sighs> Whoa! Yo, what up? Get your size up. This is like screen accurate though. Uh, this is... That's a little small. Uh, so you just got a pipe, stuck it to an electromagnet. Got 50 million views. That's how you did it in 2015. You gotta yeah. do better nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought th I thought this guy would know how to do it. You gotta get Stanley to sign it. Do you think we could just cut off that part? Oh, like, just this part it? of plastic? Yeah, yeah. Go f yourself, Jake Glazer. <laughs> Are we friends? Is it? This is, <laughs> by the way, this is Alan Pan. Oh my god, dude! Oh my god! That, that one was actually really long. Ah, this is so stupid! Come on, come on. Let's see what other people think of this. Good size hammer. What do you think of the size? <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> Fucking Did you get Jack just for this one? <laughs> I'd be with Chris Hemsworth, bro. I'd be That's true. But Chris Hemsworth doesn't know science. Yeah, but I'd rather be Chris Hemsworth. Can you go really fast? It goes like that. Jake, what the hell, bro? Keep going, keep going. No, don't keep going. That's enough. We got it. We see yeah. it. Uh, Holy f I know. Yeah. If that hits you, are you dead? That's a good question, actually. How dangerous is this? Well, we mentioned earlier that high voltage, low current is relatively safe. So while parts of the hammer are very dangerous, the actual arc should be pretty safe. In theory, again, this is debated. So just to be safe, don't try any of this. But to get to the bottom of it, we took it to Penny Hire, a studio in LA, to get hit with lightning in slow motion. Just look at some of these shots. It literally, it looks fake. Look at the way the lightning like wiggles its way through the air. Never seen anything like it, but we don't have the budget for CGI this good, so. Not in my contract. None of this is. There's no contract. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it. Medium rare. How would you like this part? Like, get him amped up about this. He's gonna turn it up. He's gonna turn it up. Look at that diabolical smile. Look at that. Oh! That was sick. That was sick. That was sick. Whoa! Wow. That was it. That was it. Whoa! Whoa! Very cool. That's sick. That's sick. Yeah, right. That's all. Just revenge for the slow-mo. Two, one, oh. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't actually hurt that much. Just feels like a little poke, honestly. There you have it. Definitely one of the most crazy, complex projects we've ever done on this channel. We worked really hard on it, so I hope you like it. It's so rewarding to finally have this thing done. We're really stepping up the project now, guys. So get ready for the next one. We'll see you there. Let's go!